how's everybody doing? Well, this is the last video of the year. 2023 is coming to an end. And I'd like to use this time to talk about the differences we now have in Lightroom versus Lightroom Classic. It used to be Lightroom was only cloud-based. And that was kind of frustrating for some people. And Adobe listened and they made it now capable of pulling up photographs that are on your local drives without the use of a catalog. All right. So that means that you can now just crank up Lightroom, go to file and open and cruise through all your hard drives and, and find a directory and a photograph and process it. And Lightroom has, I'd say about 98% of all the features that Lightroom Classic has. So whatever you can do in Lightroom Classic, you can pretty much do the very same thing in Lightroom. Now the menus and the graphical user interface is a little different. Things are in different places and, and that's a video for another day. What I want to talk about are the two main differences that might cause problems for people that use Lightroom instead of Lightroom Classic. First off, the biggie is the catalog. When you use Lightroom Classic, you are using your catalog to store, index, tag, so you can find those files later on in addition to processing. So you won't have all those features. You won't have the catalog. You have some basic tagging uh, and you don't have uh, collections in Lightroom. All right. So if you use collections in Lightroom Classic, you will not have that capability in Lightroom. The second one might be a biggie to others is that you don't have access to plugins in Lightroom versus Lightroom Classic. When you're in Lightroom Classic, you know, you can go to photo, edit in and find all your, your plugins and uh, work on your photos with them. You even have it under file, under plugin extras that you can pull up more plugins and process them. On Lightroom, you do not have that capability. The only thing you have is edit in Photoshop. Now, most plugins work in Photoshop as well as Lightroom. So what that means is that if you are bound and determined to use the new version of Lightroom, you're going to have to go to Photoshop to process your photos with any of your plugins. So that's what I want to talk to you about today because some people don't feel comfortable using Photoshop and layers and masking within layers in Photoshop. And I'm going to show that to you real quick and show you how really easy it is to use. Now I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This is the process that I use 90% of the time in uh, Lightroom Classic. I just find the masking capabilities of these plugins is very weak and doesn't have near the capabilities as Photoshop. So I would much rather apply my effects in Photoshop, mask it with the uh, masking capabilities I have in Photoshop, and then drop it back into Lightroom Classic. So we're going to go through that today to show you how to create layers and how to create basic masks so that you can make changes to your photograph in the areas that you want changed. So in this photograph, we have a sunflower field and you know, it just needs a little sharpening. The trees need sharpening. I love my sky. I don't want it sharpened. So whenever I apply the sharpening, I do want not want to apply it to the sky. So that means we're going to have to make a layer in Photoshop and put a mask on that layer so that we don't make any changes to this effect here. To move into Photoshop from Lightroom, you can go to File, Edit in Photoshop, or you can use the shortcut, which is Command Shift E. When you move into Photoshop, it's going to bring you into the work area and you're going to have your layers down here. Now, the background layer is the main photo layer in Photoshop. And we probably all know that Photoshop is a destructive process. So to help save us from messing up a photograph, what we do is we create a, a, a layer to start working on. To do that, you can drag your layer down to this little plus mark like this, or let's back this out, or you can just hit Command J and it'll create additional layer. Now, when I create a new layer, I rename it immediately with what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to say we're going to sharpen. All right. So now that I have my layer made, this is where we're going to apply the effect. So to apply an effect to the layer, we're going to go up under Filter, Topaz Labs, Sharpen AI. And this is going to launch Sharpen AI. And when it gets through working, 
it'll show us the changes that we see in our photograph. So if you look on the right, we can see that our, our flowers are much sharper, our trees are sharper, everything's sharper, including the sky, which now we see artifacts. Let's give it a second to catch up. So we see these artifacts uh, in the sky, and we don't want that to happen when we apply our sharpening. So we don't want any of this to be looking kind of scruffy. So we need to create a mask to hide this. And we're going to do that on that sharpened layer. So now that we have our sharpening applied, we're just, or, or in effect, we're going to hit the apply button, which is going to take us back to light uh, into Photoshop. And we have our sharpening layer. And you can see we have a kind of messy part of the sky. If I turn off the layer by clicking on the eyeball, we see that the sharpening effect is no longer in place. All we're seeing is our background layer. So with the sharpened layer on top, we're going to click our eyeball and we can see all these changes. So we need to mask this blue sky out so we don't have this effect. The rule in masking is white reveals, black conceals. So we're going to make a mask that should have black in this area here and white in all the other areas. So the first thing we do is make a selection. And we're going to do that by going under Select, and we're going to select Sky. Now there are a dozen different ways to make selections in Photoshop, and we're not going to really cover those today. Uh, I'll cover maybe Brush and Sky so we can see how we can manually apply some masking. Once the mask is in place, you'll see that it has these dotted lines around it, and you'll typically hear this called Marching Ants. So any area that's within the marching ants is called our selection. What we want to do now is apply that selection to a mask. And to do that, we click on this little icon here for layer mask. So when we click on it, you can now see we have black and white. White reveals, black conceals. Now remember what we talked about? We want to sharpen this area but not this area. So this is the exact opposite of what we want. So we want to invert it. All we have to do is hit click on the mask so it's outlined in white and click on Command I. When we do that, you see it reverses the mask so all the tree area is revealed and the sky mask conceals the sharpening. And as you can see, the sharpening is now gone and the the green and the sunflowers are sharpened. If we click on the little eyeball, it turns off the whole effect of this layer. So let's turn this off. And as you can see, our sky now looks good and our and no, nothing is sharpened here. So let's turn it back on. And now we have our sharpening in effect and we don't see any sharpening in the sky because our mask says white reveals, black conceals. Now, if there's anything in here that you think is too sharp or shouldn't have been sharpened, and as an example, we're going to say the roof of this shed here. It looked good without the sharpening, and now it's just too crunchy. So remember, black conceals. So what we're going to do is use a brush, a black brush, to paint over this roof, and that's going to conceal the sharpening. Our color of the brush is down here, and you can see it's black. If we needed a white brush, we just hit this little arrow and it reverses it. So that would make something be revealed. We don't want to reveal anything. We want to conceal something. So we're going to click this and we got a black brush. Now we want to go up here and select our brush. And up here we get our flow and opacity. You know, flow is how much effect applies with each brush stroke and opacity is how much shows through. And we just want it 100% because we just want to paint on it. So we're just going to paint across this area here. And as you can see, as we're painting, it's taking away the sharpening effect. So that's how we pick areas. Like if we didn't want this flower sharpened, we just paint over it just like this. And it takes the sharpening effect away. And as you can see over here, black conceals white reveal. So we painted black on the roof and it now doesn't appear as sharp as it used to be. All right. So those are two ways that we can mask by selecting the sky or just by painting. Once you have everything, oops, let's move this down a little bit. Got crazy with the move. 
Once you have everything in place, sharpened and your masking correct, you want to move it back into Lightroom. And this is where it gets a little tricky. You want to go up here and save as, and typically I save it as a TIFF file, and you can see that by default it puts it in the temporary edits folder. That is not where it came from. So this is another one of those things you need to learn. You need to remember where it came from and ours was in the Lightroom work disk and it was in the 2024 calendar and I'm going to hit save. It's going to be August 2024 edit TIFF and it's going to save it in that location. All right. Before, you know, when you were in Photoshop with Lightroom Classic, when you hit saved, it moved the TIFF, created the TIFF file, and moved it back into the same directory from which it came. Not so with Lightroom. All right, you need to make sure when you hit save as, that you're saving it as a TIFF file, and you're saving it in the location that you can find it later on. All right, once you have those, uh, the top file, name put in and in the right location you hit save. Now you don't want any compression and you leave all these others the same and click OK. Just warning you keeping the layers is going to create, uh, create a larger file size and that's OK too. So now if we go back to Lightroom you can see that our file is here and it has been sharpened but just this area and not the sky. So that's how we move back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop with the use of plugins. And like I said, in the future, I'm going to make more videos on all the ways that you can mask in Photoshop because in Photoshop, you can have masking by uh, color range or by focus area or by subject or by sky there's many many ways that you can mask something very specific just like specifically we'll say color range we go and we're going to grab a color here we have an eyedropper as you can see I'm going to click on the yellow and when I do you can see it's giving me a preview here only those areas in yellow are white which means that these are the white areas White reveals, black conceals. These are the only areas that are going to have the effect put to them. So if you just wanted to sharpen the petals of those sunflowers, very easy to do by choosing by color. So that's just an example of more ways that we can uh, do a much better selection and masking in Photoshop that we could ever do in Lightroom. I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, and I'm sure people are going to have questions about the new Lightroom, uh, shoot me an email. And I'm going to have more videos on Lightroom as the uh, new year comes about, just to make sure everybody is familiar with it and how to use it, uh, and just add it to your toolkit uh, for the use of uh, processing photos. I um, hope everybody has a great new year, and I will talk to you soon.